Chapter 3 Footsteps thudded across the floor above Vittoria's head, sprinkling dust on a freshly pressed towel as she folded it. Motes lingered to form the vague shape of a magnolia flower before they dispersed. She gritted her teeth. The Andrea would come down soon. Unfortunately, it was the same dressmaker who had denied her food months before by pretending Vittoria had caused a tear. That would not happen again today. She'd done thorough inspections of each garment right in front of the Andrea. Shrieks issued from a new riot outside. Flashes of fire, screaming horses galloping down two thin roads, the hooves hammering the cobblestones like thunder. Vittoria shuddered. The high priest must have announced a new edict or something. She turned back to the laundry line stretched near the fire and plucked a hand towel off the thick twine. Behind it, a winding stone staircase led to the upper floors of the shop. Steam thickened the air, and sweat dribbled down her spine. She hummed Aniko's favorite song as she stacked the towel in a blanket on top of several new chemises. One hour before Aniko's bedtime, just enough time to finish, receive her food, and make it back to their home to feed him. Sonara hadn't been seen in over six weeks now. He'd stopped asking about her and clung to Vittoria at night instead. At the top of the stairs, a thin doorway slammed against the wall. Lavanda maid, the Andrea cried. You have five minutes. Yes, Andrea, they shall be done. The door slammed shut. Aniko, Vittoria said under her breath. Think of Aniko. She grabbed the basket of laundered clothes. Every slip, chemise, and towel was perfectly folded. They all smelled fresh. She slipped up the stairs, set the basket at the top, and disappeared just as the door creaked open again. Silence reigned for several seconds while the Andrea inspected the clothes. Fifteen minutes, the Andrea called. The sheets are due next. Vittoria's stomach went cold. Sheets? She called. What sheets? A moment of silence filled the air. The sheets in the corner, you idiot girl. Why else would they be sitting there? Across the room, in the back corner, was a crumpled linen bag she hadn't noticed. The grayish color gave it away. It held sheets from home, she'd bet. Her nostrils flared. Many Andreas tried to slip their own laundry into the piles the lavanda maids cared for. Most shopkeepers didn't want to employ lavanda maids on their own or wash their own clothes, so they snuck clothes in. This Andrea had fooled her again. If Vittoria didn't clean the sheets, she'd lose her food. The Andrea would simply slip them in tomorrow for the next lavanda maid or try to fool that lavanda maid as well. Laundry for free, yet again. You have 15 minutes if you want your food tonight, the Andrea called. The door slammed shut. With a groan, Vittoria closed her eyes. Fifteen minutes wouldn't even give her time to heat the water, not to mention dry, press, and fold the sheets. Not without magic, at any rate, and that wasn't an option. With a new batch of Pear's medicine fresh on her mind, she resolved to try. Perhaps the Andrea would show mercy if she scrubbed them in cold water and had them drying before the fire— she stood to grab the bag. Then glass shattered. She ducked behind a steaming wooden bucket with a cry. Glass shards flew across the room. A muffled curse followed. When she peeked back out from behind the bucket, she saw a slight male figure on the floor near the window. Givers, she murmured. Who are you? No one tumbled in after him, but the sounds of the riot grew louder outside. Running feet, shouts, then the noise from the alley disappeared, leaving an odd silence. Vittoria peered at the figure on the floor. Stubby eyelashes, dark hair, dirty face, half of a beard on his sharp jaw. He was short, smaller even than her. Was he dead? She should call the Andrea right away. Hello? she called. Are you hurt? A groan responded. She advanced. Something inside her wanted to see the man's expression change. His hair darkened further, his eyes swapped colors. Because then he'd be La Salvatora, that vague figure who protected her every day, fed her family, and haunted her dreams. She looked for him everywhere, but saw him nowhere. His voice, however, remained in her mind, a solid, husky echo. Although she had no reason to believe it, she suspected his voice had been his own, sultry, deep. Can I help you? Another groan, this one more like a growl. She picked up a fire poker with a glowing red tip and swung it in front of her, just in case. Her brother, Anton, had given her enough self-defense lessons that she felt the confidence to step forward. 
Are you injured? Yes. The response came like a roll of thunder. The man on the ground gained his feet all at once, as if he hadn't just fallen through a window. The sudden movement forced her to leap back, poker ready. The man pressed the heel of his hand against his head and blinked rapidly. You'll have to pay for that window. Of course. She'd expected him to protest. Her eyebrows rose. What? I will pay. You will? I broke it, didn't I? There was a warm quip to his tone, something familiar about his voice. He was oddly affable for someone who had just plunged down a hole and through a window. She peered at him more closely, something like hope building in her chest. She knew that voice, had tried to replay it in her mind countless times over the last two months, to hear a hint of it in the streets while she distributed food. He stared back at her. Where had his beard gone? Forgive me, but did you have a beard just now? His once stubbled face appeared clean-shaven. She hadn't imagined it, had she? A trick of the light, perhaps, but hope filled her. Was this La Salvatora? Had he returned? He scrubbed a hand over his face, but didn't elaborate. Instead, another wince racked his features. Yes. La Salvatora? She dared to ask. He grimaced as he reached back. Yes, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make an entrance like that. The horses. Her heart fluttered for a second. Words filled her throat, then stopped as his features changed again. She lowered the poker. You're hurt. In my back. Glass, maybe? Turn around. He lifted one eyebrow, but obeyed. In all the weeks that had passed since he'd made himself known to her, she hadn't spoken to him again. Blankets, buckets, and medicine appeared at some point in her day. She gave it away to the needy. The bucket would disappear, and then she returned home, safe every time. In her mind, he was an elusive figure, an idea, a hope, a protector. La Salvatora was safety. Now, he wore the loose white shirt of any worker on the street. Dust and soot marred the back. A shard of glass stuck out from his right shoulder blade, and a crimson stain spread across the material. A second stain bloomed just below it. He was a normal witch, just as she'd always assumed, with blood and sinew and pain, just like her. But still, her mind had built him up as more. There's glass in your back. By honor, he muttered. Of course there is. By honor, a landowner phrase. Their belief system revolved around the vague idea of honor as a guiding, governing force. They lived for honor, tried to die with it. It decided whether they advanced to their next life, which should, if they had honor in their current life, be a better one. His shoulders had grown while her thoughts raced. Why would he maintain the changing magic with her? Didn't they know each other? Although they never interacted, she felt as if they were friends. Had she made it up? Likely, he saw her as a worker and nothing more. An asset to protect, perhaps. Setting aside a flash of disappointment at the thought, she set the poker down and motioned to a stool. Have a seat. I need to pull those out. He obeyed without hesitation. Thank you, Vittoria. The sound of his deep voice speaking her name made her stomach shiver. She fought back a smile and nodded instead. He might change his appearance, but his voice was the same rolling velvet. He sent a rueful glance at the broken window. Glass glittered on the floor like castaway diamonds. Fix the window, please? She asked crisply. Of course. Seconds later, glimmering window panes filled the space. They appeared new, not weathered by time and dust. The glass on the ground glittered away until not a speck remained. Stunned, she stared at it for a full five seconds before shaking her head and turning her attention back to the task at hand. Magic. What a powerful ability. Focus, she told herself. You must heal La Salvatore. Again. She stepped up to his back, where the blood stain formed a teardrop pattern. His hair had darkened into a deep ebony. Bronze skin, unblemished, flowed from beneath the white shirt now. Vittoria reached under a table and grabbed an old bucket filled with torn fabric scraps. She searched for long, thin ones, her tongue utterly tied now. What could they talk about? Nothing, maybe. What should she say? Thanks for the food. Sounded trite. Too weak. So, how is the grand plan to save the workers coming along? Too searching. Too awkward. 
All of this was awkward. She studied the glass in his back as she tore a long strip of fabric in half with a vengeance. The sound of thudding feet overhead momentarily distracted her. She moved faster. Forgive me if this is too presumptuous, he murmured, breaking the silence. But why are you a lavanda maid? I've wondered for the last several months why you're not conscripted into a trade. With your lovely face, you should be working within a landowner's house with steady food. Vittoria bit back her reply, even if she was grateful for something other than the silence. Lovely face sent a little thrill through her. I have no desire to work in a wealthy house. He lifted an amused eyebrow. You don't want to eat? I didn't say that. The glass fragments embedded in his back would be easy to pull out. No doubt he had a spell to heal quickly, assuming no shards were left behind. The benefits of magic. He didn't even suck in a sharp breath when she probed the edges of one of the wounds. The squishy flesh trickled blood, which stained the glass a translucent red. Is it because of your nephew? She hesitated. How much should she reveal to him? There was little in her life to hide, and nothing he probably hadn't observed by seeing her home. And pear. He made a sound in his throat. Tell me honestly, he whispered with a raw sincerity that caught her stomach. His mannerisms were more intense tonight, less affable and breezy, as if something weighed on him. Do you still think La Salvatore is a disappointment? Vittoria let out a long breath. There was a touch of longing in his tone. Did such a man want her approval? The thought almost made her laugh. Are you concerned about your reputation? She asked lightly. Or do you worry about the welfare of the workers who so deeply respect you? Workers. She wrenched the shards free, one after the other. He only grunted when she shoved the cloth onto his bleeding back, forcing his spine to arch. She'd deliberately chosen that moment to remove the glass. She wanted to think about his response. She tossed the bloody strips and glass into the fire, then made short work of wrapping the linen around his ribs, her heart thumping in her chest when the door upstairs flew open. Lavanda maid? Vittoria froze, her hands mid-air over his back. A flush of cold surged through her body so quickly she felt certain he'd feel it in her fingertips. His gaze snapped toward her, his breath held. Yes, Andrea? The Andrea didn't respond, but instead barked at someone else upstairs. With a growl and a stamp of her feet, the Andrea disappeared with a slam of the door, presumably to deal with something else. Vittoria had minutes, if that. Vittoria finished tying off the bandage and stepped back. She gestured to the doorway that led to the alley. You are free to go. He stood slowly. Not yet. Relief filled her. She didn't want him to leave yet. It was like she'd captured sunshine, and she wanted him to stay with her for a few more minutes and warm her day. She motioned to the bag in the corner. Any chance your magic can clean some sheets? The Andrea brought her own bedclothes and sprung them on me, likely so she wouldn't have to pay again. He grinned without mirth, the pain still apparent in his gaze. For you? Anything. Vittoria's stomach flipped at the warmth in his words. His hair lightened from his roots into a stark white, like new cotton. Did he ever show himself in the cycle of transformative magic? The bag flew to her, surely under a spell, and she dumped it out. He whispered something, and the rumpled sheets underwent a transformation. The faded gray cotton changed back to a subtle white. Stains faded. He worked cautiously so the clothes appeared cleaned, not transformed. Otherwise, the Andrea would accuse her of magic and she'd be piked within hours. Sheets, pressed and folded, stacked themselves in her arms. Thank you. Fortunately, I learned simple household spells years ago. He winked. It's my pleasure. His deep voice belied the young man he now appeared to be. Why did the magic rotate so quickly tonight? Some of his personas lasted only ten seconds now, where before it had been minutes. She gave a nervous smile, then set the clothes in a basket, dashed up the stairs, and left it there. When she came back, he stood near the door holding the usual bucket of food. She slipped on her wooden shoes, then accepted it. Thank you. Thank you for healing me again, he said with amusement. Always. His expression softened. Their fingers lingered for half a breath before he released the bucket to her hand. His face sharpened with intensity. May I walk you home? Don't you always? He smiled. Indeed, but this time I was going to go with you visibly. Yes, of course. 
She motioned up the stairs. But first, the Andrea. Forget her, he scoffed. There is enough food for you in the bucket. I was going to buy Pear's medicine again with the food from today. His brow ruffled. He had small eyes and a wide nose now, but wasn't unkind in appearance. I can supply you with medicine. Yes, of course, but that could go to someone else in pain. Why would I cast this food aside when others could benefit from even the smallest amount? Besides, I worked hard for it. We receive so little. His forehead smoothed out. You're extraordinary, Vittoria. She blushed as the door opened at the top of the stairs, then held her breath at the sound of shuffling sheets. For several long moments, the Andrea said nothing, as if she couldn't quite figure it out. Vittoria's heart beat faster. The Andrea could still accuse her of magic. Finally, the Andrea muttered, Food is in the bucket, and slammed the door. Vittoria's lips twitched. One moment. She slipped over to the stairs. Being away from him for a breath or two gave her a chance to collect her wits. She ascended the stairs slowly and tried to empty her mind. A few stale pitas and a crock of leftover soft cheese waited inside. She collected it, pushed it into her pocket, and returned with a slightly clearer mind. La Salvatora opened the door as she approached, but stood in her path. I have something I'd like to ask you, after you're done with your usual distribution. The magic had stopped rotating. None of his features changed now. He was a thin-shouldered, middle-aged man, with dark hair and eyes and a beard that could have made him anyone. She imagined that the changing magic might draw more attention in some situations, which is why he paused it now. Was this him? Unlikely. Why ever reveal himself to anyone? It would be too great a risk. She felt breathless when she said, Yes. He smiled, and it brightened his eyes. Then let's go.